I'm somewhat startled and is soon after rudely awakened by another unnerving episode of air turbulence as a transatlantic air carrier scurries and scurs through benighted skies bejeweled by amethyst stars somewhere over deep seas. Prying open my opening eyes, I now behold again and again in this, the final dispensation of the fullness of timelessness, the most beautiful figure drawing of a living being to ever impearl and empower a loving scene, the elusive one in Eminas Greece, the her herself. My beloved keepsake and bridal one, cozily lays loosely dreaming a sweet death in the arch arms of deep space astronautical sleep, counting floating sheep in her window seat, her seatbelt fastened for her own safe keep, as we remotely view our roadmap to inner peace, yes, destination heaven. Intimately entranced with empyrean ambience in a dimly lit and definitely silent aeronautical aircraft cabin, Jamboree Jollities. As in living grace at a loving pace, with cupped hands and an attitude of gratitude, I lean over her burnished body like the Tower of Pisa, softly sewing a fertile kiss on her kindred forehead, invoking ancient spirits with our pagan poetry. Beautifully breamed like a multi-billionaire super yacht, and brightly lit like a magic lantern in a hollowed-out Halloween pumpkin, she righteously radiates in a spirited aura, in a spiritual aurora, that affinity with the infinity, like unto the mystifying and mystic alpine glow on a mysterious mountain's peak in some forgotten country on an undiscovered continent. My feeling fingers sentimentally stroke her cultured cheeks, which in slowing motion bespeaks of an upside-down frown, like an unmanned military drone alerting and alarming her waking self to the transcendental trickery of this courting and courteous cupid and a sudden and surprising puckish sneak. High rising like charm snakes, our cruciform arm spans intricately intertwine and interweave like creepers onto trellises in a bored meeting of enlightening minds with opening arms as we deeply press our love long lips like platinum recordings, three four tying our triumphant transpersonal true lover's knot. Now in the paradisiacal and aphrodisiacal Edenic garden of the two living trees, Kabbalah and Tantra, with the unomistica of the unique horn and the mermaiden, the greatest love story never told is now being told in a darkened fuselage, perhaps to be later retold by future generations of generational gaps. All this and all the while, unknowing and unsuspecting sleeping passages, snooze and snore like negligent night watchmen with sleep apnea. The incumbent empress and designated bearer of the golden keys of present fate and future destiny, passionate for and pleasured by the potent portent of prospective sensuous moments and its ever proselytizing sexual momentum, deeply gasps for incoming oxygen as this emperor penguin and ritual magician grabs joyously in firm handholds of divine handiworking, her blossoming and bountiful breasts, the crystal chalices and totemic pole stars of the celestial city that is her sacred heart. Her nascent nipples sprout forth like tapioca pearls as a well-balanced bodily saucily steadily swelters towards boiling points, heating up like an electric blanket as we intuitively interlock our tepid tongues like deer antlers and prolong friendship kissing, our salivating mouths sweetened like condensed milk. Swooping swiftly like a sybaritic succubus, selflessly seizing unto a holy moment, her capable hands medically massage the exponential growth in my lusting loins and groaning groins. My divining rod dowsing for those secret and sacred Greffenberg crop circled spots in a heterosexual oasis hardens like raw iron being finally forged by a blacksmith's hammer. Like a frenzied feral child, Bacchanalian mammalian and belligerent barbarian, barely besieging a capital citadel and totalitarian throne of a plenipotentiary powers and interplanetary prowess, my multidextrous and manly digits conveniently and quite easily surpass her heavily moistened and sweetly scented knickers, slowly spreading her reddened labial curtains as his grandmaster of shamanic ceremonies and ritualistic rites of portal passage reverently rubs her soiling clitoris, her royal coat of arms. Her tensile intensity thighs rock and roll rhythmically to and fro like a brand new rocking horse as I impulsively yet eruditely introduce my fugitive fingers into her concupiscent cunt and most sanctified deity. Delicately inserting them deeper and deeper into a pretty slit of a pokey slot, her breezy breathing, heavy laden like onto an asthma attack. Kindly receptive and givingly reciprocating in a synergistic syzygy, the elect lady zealously unzips my tailor-made trousers and synchronously strokes my talking stick in his verbose verbiage, tugging and pulling in a tenacious tug of warring wants my enlarging lingam towards her earthen mound, pleading and purring for this extraterrestrial act of ultra-terrestrial lovemaking. Hastily unfastening her domestically abusive seatbelt, she lifts up out of sordid sight and thus out of meddling mind the protruding seat arms, then tentatively tucks up her short skirt as a ceremony remove her wet undergarments, carelessly flinging them onto the carpeted floor, only then revealing her burning bush, bubbling like a spa bath, mushy mellow marshmallow foaming forming forth from her frothing mouth. 
like Tetris blocks, we readily reposition our delighting and life light bodies into 69 numeric turmeric as she rock climbs the higher than highest rungs of our sky ladder of sidereal lovemaking, majestically mounting and naughtily nesting on my peacock tail, perching itself plump like a maddened wet hen. Forcefully foisting my gallant and galloping gift of a hobby horse unto her feasting mouth like a battering ram, and deeper still to the gilded hilt of her full throttling throat, she slowly but surely, even selflessly, suffocates in sucking and suckling my hard candy, itself hardening like double glazed Guy Fawkes candied apples. Like a desperate thirst-stricken dog lapping up toilet water, my tasting and testing tongue lizardishly licks at a catch of a snatch and fish of the day, skillfully unlocking the labial latch to her pubic lair, only to then voraciously eat out her bounteous bounties like an Amish and Mennonite home cookery buffet restaurant. I'm a sacred bull grazing a lizard field. She mnemonically moans in the harmonies of the spheres, her aureate maiden laureate head bobbling buoyantly like a bamboozled buoy, surely savoring each millimetre of my heavy machinery being biohazardously operated under the intense intoxication of kundalini magic that serpentine fire, even though spiritualizing serpents residing in our sigmoid spines. She sporadically squirts forth tantalizing and tasting harmonious secretions like gushing geezers onto my sweaty face and community chest as I religiously, albeit blasphemously, gold rim her gaping anus whilst once more safely lodging my frolicking fingers into her vaginal vortex. Like a hovering hawk, she predatorily pounces on a pinioned prey and Islamic fundamental pirate mate spinning around like an antique spinning top from a random garage sale. Firmly gripping my Aaron's rod with fine-tuned feeling, she freely guides it into a hot sauce saturated wishing well, her contracting cunt craving every fraction of friction, as my burning knife carves up her private parts carnally and confidently. Her thinner thighs continues to convulse in sporadic epileptic fits, custom fitting my fully fattened phallus as it thrusts in and out of her industriously and intimately like a stamina workhorse or migrant factory worker. Digging her nails into my athletic torso, she raunchy rises bourbon ball like an Olympic gymnast on artistic apparatus, freakly contorting a curvaceous figure as a human form spontaneously combusts, transmuting in light and transfiguring in love and body, mind and spirit in a death event of rebirth experience that is divine feminine consciousness. With a thunderous roar and eschatological trumpet, my rocket vehicle vertically launches into an umbilical tower, the star history of the many mansioned worlds and multiversal and multi-universal meta-creation, eternal and endless realities, triumphing temporal and transit actualities, as my fountainhead sprays piping hot sermon fluid like festive fireworks into a holy of holies, sanctum sanctorum, and garba griha. Her fotting and folding wailing walls, fructuously fortified like sacramental wine, suddenly rend asunder in a perfect and profound unified orgasm, igniting us, conjoined twin matchsticks, the somatic summit of the initiation experience of baby god steps and baby goddess stirps into the hidden and the unseen, the invisible and the imaginary, the mystery and its movements.